Assalamualaikum and welcome back to our discussion on intragroup transaction. And our focus today is on intragroup sale of current asset and elimination of unrealized profit. And I'm going to share with you illustrative example where the uh, situation is that the subsidiary is the uh, parties that are selling the current asset, which is the trading inventories to the parent. Earlier, I was using a question September 2011 from FAR 300, FAR 300. I'm going to use the same question with some adjustment being made to suit the uh, in the objective that I'm trying to achieve using this particular illustration. So this is intra-group transaction again and again you need to remember intra-group transaction may have to be eliminated, must be eliminated and must not is a big no to be reported in the group or consolidated financial statement. Okay, this is our example. You have the statement of financial position of Lily and Rose. Lily is the subsidiary parent company. Rose is the subsidiary company. And um, the additional information here, you are given the statement of financial position. We will focus on the item that is relevant to our discussion of subsidiary selling trading inventories to the parent. This is example two. If you are interested to watch my video on example one, check the description and I have provided the link for that particular video. So additional information, I've made a little change to this um, additional information. The acquisition date is still the same as per the example once. 1st of July 2009, 60% is the percentage of control that you have in your subsidiary company rose. Ordinary shares is what gives you the right to control because acquisition was more than 50% 50, uh, 50 more than majority shareholding. Retained profit figure is given here as opposed to retained loss in the previous example too. General reserve figure is given as opposed to no, no balance uh, to our example 1. Here is 10,000. All these are profit figure which means that these are credit balances. The non contrary interest available on that date, this will be used to uh, be um, to calculate your uh, the non contrary interest at the end of the reporting date for the purpose of including them in the consolidated statement of financial position. This is the information that will relate to our discussion. Subsidiary is the seller. So here you have that uh, information telling you that the subsidiary is the seller. Subsidiary rose sold goods sixty thousand, and that was uh, on credit. You have the word invoice is good, so that was goods sold on credit, and uh, you are informed forty percent on selling price. On selling price, that means this is a margin. In my example one, I discussed regarding the application of markup. One third of these goods, one third here is one third of 60,000, which is 20,000, still remain unsold. So the profit on this unsold inventory that is going to be eliminated by using the markup percentage. And Lily has only paid three quarter of the amount due. So the amount due is 60,000. Lily paid three quarter from 60,000. How much? That was 45,000 that has been paid. So the amount unpaid or the amount owing is left by 15,000. Okay, we can work that out. Before that, this is our focus. Focus on account receivable. Remember, the seller is the subsidiary. So just label who is the seller. You can just put the seller here, seller, and this is your buyer, the parent, so that you will have that right adjustment, seller and buyer. Next, we'll focus on the accounts payable because that gives rise to accounts payable uh, balances that you need to. Cancel. 
next right uh, we have to look at the accounts receivable and account on and also on inventory and the accounts payable as well all right let's just look at what we have here okay during the year rose uh, sold the goods so we have read the question so you know the detail already i have just underlined the important things and this is the thing that i would like to share regarding the margin information this are relating to margin okay margin you will need to use that to calculate your provision for analyzed profit so number one, as usual, identify who is the seller, it is subsidiary, the buyer is the parent. Ident the, what, uh, here you have the intra group credit sale, 60,000, and the amount paid was three quarter, the amount owing is uh, 15. There is a general entry, consolidation general entry for this to remove the intra group uh, credit sales and purchase, but adjusting for the amount paid first. And um, underlies profit on unsold inventories based on margin, 40% on selling price. So one third is one third of the goods that still remain in the closing entry. 60 is the goods that you sold. So that gives you 20. 20,000 times 40%, that 8,000 is the unrealized profit. So you need to make adjustment for this as well as for this two adjustments. On, are needed for the consolidation purposes so these are some summary of what i've uh, explained intercompany sale of inventories who is the seller who is the buyer unsold inventories how much amount owing how much unrealized profit how do you calculate and also um, the now we're moving on to the elimination of the intra group profit or elimination of un realize profit in the seller unrealized profit you intra group profit is referring to unrealized profit in the seller's retained profit don't go and adjust in lily's brahat lily's column go and adjust in retained profit of rose credit the inventory of lily because lily is the buyer with how much with eight thousand and this will be adjust in the schedule schedule that we have in the next page the elimination of intra group balances of amount owing accounts payable so the amount that will be reported here is just the amount owing which is 15,000 another way of doing that is by taking one quarter that were not yet paid Ten, times 60,000 so 15,000 remove that from the current liabilities under accounts payable remove that from the current asset under accounts receivable and here, this is the information that I have subtracted from the additional information number one so that you can use it. So the same thing will be repeated. Where 125,000 earlier we add because of the post pre-acquisition loss in our example one. Example two, you will deduct or reduce that pre-acquisition balance, retain profit credit balance, pre-acquisition balance on credit or the credit balance so that will give you post acquisition balance of 105 and because the uh, case here is that the uh, subsidiary is the seller the analyzed profit of 8000 will not be adjusted in the group retained profit which is the parent it will be adjusted in the seller's retained profit so when you adjust this you might you go and reduce your retained profit of the subsidiary so that will give you the post acquisition adjusted balance of 97 so this 97,000 is what you need to use in terms of distributing it to the group. So this one is as a result of 60% from 97,000. And this is as a result of 40% 30, 40 from 97,000. Next, the same thing will be done for the... So the total... Uh, group retained profit will be four six eight two hundred because less 
or no deduction is done for the unrealized profit in the parent since the parent is not the seller. Group uh, reserve also includes general reserve. So this is general reserve of rows. Uh, the one as per the reporting date figure was 50. The pre-acquisition general reserve credit balance was the 10. So the post-acquisition balance was 40. 24,000 is 40,000 times 60% percent percentage acquired. 16,000 is 40,000 times 40% 40 or alternatively, this is 40 minus 20. So you will add up this 130 and 24, 154, group, uh, the gen group reserve of Lily, group general reserve. This is group retained profit. The non controlling interest, do not forget to include the con non controlling interest on the acquisition of ordinary share on the date of acquisition. If you have other non controlling interest for the preference shares, do include. So 350,000, there you get 404,800. Prepare the consolidated statement of financial position because this is the requirement. But you must also prepare the schedule because if you are focusing for the exam, yeah, of uh, the uh, what you need to do in the exam, this is part of the answer as well for exam like for 320. Okay, consolidated statement of financial position, current asset, just add the balances remove with the unrealized profit provision for unrealized profit this eight thousand you have two three nine account receivable there are two so there are only one adjustment which is the intra group balances that you have go and check that adjustment this adjustment here is what you should reflect right next is the group reserve, the group retained profit will take this figure, the one from your schedule. Group general reserve will take the one from the schedule. Group general reserve, the one that is done by Lily. After taking into consideration the share of post acquisition reserve balances of the subsidiary, non controlling interest will be this figure that you have earlier computed in your schedule. And this is the important figure, which is your accounts payable. Where that also needs to be adjusted with the intra group balances of the amount owing. And that gives you 124,000. Take your time to screenshot this question and you can try and do that as a practice. You can also um, screenshot the answer so that that can be discussed uh, or being studied later on. And this is the question. The full question you can access them in the uh, maybe in your own uh, journey of finding uh, extra questions but I'm just sharing this with you okay with that I thank you for watching that is about it there isn't any more uh, I'll see you when I will see you in my next video I'll be talking on intercompany sale of uh, non current asset a non-current asset um, where we are focusing on PPE. I thank you for watching. Assalamualaikum and have a pleasant day ahead.